been a long old international break, isn't it? After City, two weeks nestling on that lovely nest egg. Solskjaer still in the job. Now we go to Watford. We all thought that Solskjaer was going to be replaced, but he has not been replaced as Manchester United's manager. So we're going into this game. We're not really sure what to expect. Solskjaer talking in his pre-match press conference ahead of Watford, saying that there's been a great response from Manchester United's players, that he expects United to be better. They've worked on things in training. What have they worked on? What formation will they use? Who will start in a team? There's just so many question marks about this team. But what I'm going to do is run through my predicted 11 for this game against Watford. Please let me know who you would start, who you think is going to start in the comments below, as you always do. But let's run straight into this one. And first things first, we're definitely moving back to the 4-2-3-1. I've put the players in here that I think are definites to start, in my opinion. And I've also put question marks over positions that, you know, we can discuss and debate as the video goes on. But, you know, in defence, I think it's pretty much indisputable that Lindelof's going to start alongside Maguire there. Uh, I think it will be like that. I think we'll see Luke Shaw in there. Now, Luke Shaw obviously had a bit of a concussion before the international break, didn't play with England. So I think he's going to be absolutely fine to play. But the real question mark, of course, in defence re revolves around this bloke. Harry Maguire has been absolutely atrocious for Manchester United this season in comparison to the levels that he set himself the year before. Uh, and, and well, Lindelof got plenty of so Lindelof got plenty of hate. Maguire, they both got plenty of hate, really. Now Varane's going to be missing. Varane's not playing in this game, so that's not really a question. The question is about the back five. I don't want to see the back five here against Watford. I don't really want to see the back five used for any like continuous length of time at Manchester United. Not with the squad that we've got. You can't you can't have a squad that's got Ronaldo, Sancho, Rashford, Greenwood, Bruno, Pogba, and then play five defenders. It just doesn't sit right. It's not towards the. It's not the style that we've build, been building towards. If we have been building towards anything, it's certainly not five at the back. It might have worked against Spurs, but let's be honest, it was the lowest point of Spurs. They sacked their manager after. I don't really think that could be used as a measure. And let's be honest, the measure was Atalanta, and we got played off the park there. And then City, we won't speak about City. That game is dead and buried. But De Gea is obviously going to start in goal. Lindelof and Maguire will be the starting centre-back partnership. I want to see Maguire coming in and showing the sort of form maybe he showed for England rather than showed for United. Celebrating that goal, Roy Keane wasn't very happy with it, and he didn't prove anything about... The, the measure of a great defender is not how many headed goals he scores. Although Maguire definitely should be getting more on target for United. Jesus. So I want to see that sort of Maguire coming back into the team and that back five. Look, maybe you'll see Alex Sellers playing down there instead of Luke Shaw. Maybe his uh, concussion is going to rule it. The concussion, it, well, you know, he, he didn't look that well. It was it against City he got that concussion? I think it was. Um, let's see if Shaw plays there. But that's the defence that I'm going for. I'm going for that back five of De Gea with Shaw, Maguire, Lindelof and wan -Bissaka. Let's quickly move on to midfield. But before I do, a quick shout out to our sponsors. <laughs> Before I do move on, I want to say a big shout out to OneFootball for helping support United People's TV throughout the last few months. If you haven't already downloaded the app, you know where to go right now. Head down to the link in the description, download it. First of all, it's free and everyone loves free things. Uh, second of all, it's actually a decent app, more than decent. All the latest Manchester United news, match coverage, pre-game build-up, all the match stats after the game, all the latest transfer news, it's all in one place. That's why it's called One Football. So use the link in the description, download it for free. It will support United People's TV, it will support One Football, and everyone's a winner. But let's move on to talk about the midfield. As is always the case with Manchester United this season, we know that the question marks revolve around midfield. They've been revolving around midfield all year long, and this game's absolutely no different. We're, he we're hearing that Donny van der Beek is in line to start this game. And I'll be honest, He's in my starting 11. I'm putting him here and I'm going to put him alongside the disruptor, the wasp of the team. I call him the wasp anyway. I'm going to put him alongside Fred. Now, it's technically a 4-2-3-1, but I think it would operate more like that. Basically, Fred just sitting slightly behind, basically screening in front of that back four. That's what Fred does well, man. It's what he did for Brazil during the international break. Fred, it might be a limited footballer, but when you get it right, when you get it right with what he can actually do, Fred is a good player. And I imagine he is just going to basically get the ball there, just feed it off to Van der Beek. Now, Van der Beek, Van der Beek, Van der Beek. We've been speaking about Van der Beek all year, haven't we, man? About how little opportunity he's been getting inside that midfield, how he should be playing more often. He just hasn't played. 
But Van der Beek is a sort of press resistant midfielder who can come inside that team and actually do a job and help Manchester United with our build up, with everything inside it. And right now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is living on a prayer. And I, I don't like saying that. I swear on my life, I'm not enjoying what I'm watching. But going into the City game after the Liverpool game, I expected a response from these players and there wasn't even a slight response. I expected, I, well, I just, so I don't know what to expect now. After City and after the international break, I don't know what to expect from this game. But I do expect there to be changes. And Solskjaer, if we're going to be, even the hypothetical opportunity of moving forward, it can't revolve around Fred and McTominay in midfield. Now, McTominay, as you know, he missed uh, the international break with a couple of games with Scotland, I think just through a minor illness. So I think he'd probably be available. Uh, Varane, as we know, is the only person ruled out with Paul Pogba. But I would start Donny in midfield there in this game, in my opinion. Now, the question marks would then be around his partner. Matic could be played there. But as we saw against Leicester, he's just so slow, Matic, in this position. It allowed Tielemans to sort of come into these areas here where Van der Beek and Fred are there and just dominate with the ball. I don't want to see that. I don't really want to see Matic in this 11. As much as I think he does bring some sort of balance, I just don't really think that I want to have him there. My own opinion, you might disagree on that. You let me know what you think about that in the comments. Now, of course, Bruno Fernandes. There's been real questions asked about Bruno this year. He still keeps turning in a ridiculous return with goals and assists. No one can take that away from his game. But Bruno, as I've said quite a lot of times, he does tend to drift a little bit far up the pitch there, leaving a huge space here. Now, that space is some something that Donny van der Beek should be able to, you know, make smaller, if you know what I mean. Van der Beek, if he does play, will be able to move into that space with the ball and do a little bit of what Bruno can do from a little bit deeper. That's something that Scott Matomane simply can't do. It's something Fred can't do. Van der Beek can. It's another reason why I think it could work inside that midfield. And Van der Beek, we know he could work. It could work all season. Simple as that. But Bruno, he's, he's a lot of the times this season, he's kind of like shifted up to be more like a supporting striker with Ronaldo rather than operating as number 10. But I'm going to put Bruno in there. Now, the left wing, there's question marks. Or are there? Now, Marcus Rashford, he missed the international break with England again due to illness, I think it was. I think Rashford's going to start and I think he'll be fit for this game. I don't really think there's too much to say about that, really. Rashford and Shaw, I was hoping that was going to be an excellent partnership this season. It's not even been a partnership this season. Rashford miss, was missing for the first couple of months and then he's come back and then Luke Shaw is now mentally and physically missing on the pitch. So there's been not much of a partnership there whatsoever. I have, I don't know what to say really about Rashford that you don't already know, but I think if we're looking at a game where, let's be honest, everything is on the line for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he's going to turn to the players that he trusts the most. And I've said this before and I'll go full screen on this one because... We have to move away from the player loyalties. I said it in my pre-match uh, chat and video about the Watford game. I said if Solskjaer doesn't move away from this uh, obsession, really, with player loyalties to McTominay, to Fred, uh, to Shaw, uh, and to Maguire, and not just playing players on form, it's going to... Well, it has hurt him to this point. But Rashford, I would put him in here, and I would definitely, 100%, I would start Jaden Sancho on the wing. I don't even think it's a real... Is it a question? Of course it's a question. But Sancho, I don't need to explain why I think Sancho would be good on the wing there. You all know the answers. You don't need me to tell you. wan I I put wan down as the player I thought was going to be most improved this season. That's worked out pretty well so far. But I think wan if if he was allowed to create a partnership with Sancho, would benefit from it. But Sancho's just not played there. I don't know why. I really, really don't know why. But then I wanted to... You know, you could see wan Coming on the overlap there, I, I, I don't know. I just I, I can I can't see it being a bad thing if I'm being completely honest. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer disagrees. That's why he's not played there. But Jaden Sancho, I would definitely play. And of course, Cristiano Ronaldo is going to be starting up front. And will Cristiano Ronaldo come up with another goal that saves Solskjaer? And I don't like saying that, uh, but he really did with that goal against Atalanta for sure. Uh, if we hadn't got three points there, I think it was after the Liverpool game. I think it was game over for Solskjaer. But um, the Champions League, I think, has certainly given more uh, justification inside those members of the board who aren't, who don't want Solskjaer to replace. It's, it's Manchester United's progress in the Champions League in terms of us being top and knowing that if we beat Villarreal, we go through. And Ronaldo's goals have been absolutely crucial to that. So that would be my starting eleven for the game against Watford. Obviously, it's going to be De Gea in goal. Hopefully, he won't be too busy, but you can't bloody rule it out. I think a centre-back partnership of Lindelof and Maguire, I don't think we'll see Bailly there. 
I think it will be Shaw and wan -Bissaka. How aggressive will Shaw and wan -Bissaka be? I don't know. Will they sit back or will they overlap? We'll find out. I went for Van Der Beek in the middle with Fred. Basically, Fred operating as the sort of the disruptor. The disruptor down there and Van Der Beek, therefore, allowing to play ball. Play ball, man. Let him play football. Bruno, he's still going to be doing this, drifting up and down. But if Van Der Beek plays, he'll be able to go into these positions a bit more and cover the spaces if Bruno does get excited. And he will get excited and play more as a supporting striker. With Ronaldo up front, Sancho on the right and Rashford on the left. Maybe I'm dreaming. I shouldn't be dreaming because, honestly, that's a goddamn balanced team. You're looking at balance, balance, balance. I would say the only balance question marks you've got are in the midfield, but it doesn't matter who you play there. You have question marks about whether Manchester United's team is balanced, whether it's Fred or whether it's Matic sitting behind, whether it's McTominay sitting behind, whether it's Fred playing alongside McTominay, whether it's Fred playing alongside... You get the goddamn point. There's, there's compromise in every single position inside that midfield with Manchester United player. But that would be my starting eleven. Who would be in yours? You let me know in the comments below, as you always do. Please, if you would, drop a like on the video. Subscribe to United People's TV. Tell me your predictions for the game. Do you think United will beat Watford? Would it be the performance that we all think Solskjaer really needs? You let me know everything in the comments below. And make sure you get your team down there too.